Holy rhythm, 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 holy rhythm. This is the first video in a series of lessons to cover polyrhythms. Please look in the video description for links to the other videos in this series. Polyrhythms are an advanced style of rhythm. If you do not have a basic understanding of rhythm already, this instructional series may be a bit over your head and too difficult to understand. Even if you do have a basic understanding of rhythm, polyrhythms are challenging to play and understand. Several music examples will be used to demonstrate how to play and understand polyrhythms. But first... What is a polyrhythm? The word poly means many. So in simple terms, a polyrhythm means many rhythms. Steve Vai, in his paper called Tempo Mental, says a polyrhythm is just what it says two rhythms or feels happening at the same time. However, it is a bit more complicated than that. Why? Because if it were simply the case of having different rhythms being played at once, I would argue that most music is using polyrhythms. The drums, guitars, vocals, etc. are not all playing the exact same rhythm pattern all the time. However, this does not make a polyrhythm. A polyrhythm is used to create tension in a song. By placing at least two different rhythms together that sound somewhat off, yeah. you can create something that really stands out to the listener's ear. When you see something like a triplet or quintuplet, sextuplet, nonuplet, etc., you're probably dealing with a polyrhythm. Notes grouped in this fashion will have some indication that they are not naturally found within the given time signature you are playing in. The numbers circled on screen right now are the numbers indicating a deviation from what's normally found in this time signature. The numbers are telling you how to space these notes that would not occur naturally in the given time signature. You could also notate the same thing like this you would wind up hearing the same thing either way. There will be more information to explain what something like 5-2 means coming up. Now, beats are always evenly divided when dealing with note values that do occur naturally in a given time signature. Most music you hear is in a 4-4 time signature. This means you have four beats that fill up the bar or measure. Bar and measure are interchangeable. You could say you're on the third bar or the third measure and you wind up with the same thing. Now, the number up top in the time signature fraction is telling you how many beats fill up the bar. The number on the bottom is telling you the value of the beat. Four equals a quarter note. You can have any number, any number on top. Doesn't matter, go nuts. The only numbers you can have on the bottom are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. But good luck ever finding something with 64 on the bottom, or even a 1. So the 1 on bottom equals a whole note, 2 on the bottom equals a half note, 4 is a quarter note, 8 is an eighth note, 16 for 16th note, 32 for 32nd note, and 64 for 64th note. So why the hell am I telling you all this? Good question. This is to further explain dividing the beats evenly. A whole note can be divided in half and give you a half note. A half note can be divided in half and give you a quarter note. Half of a quarter note is an eighth note. Half of an eighth note is a 16th note. Half of a 16th note is a 32nd note. Half of a 32nd note is a 64th note. Another way to look at all this is a whole note equals two half notes, or four quarter notes, or eight eighth notes, or 16 16th notes, etc. 
a half note equals two quarter notes, or four eighth notes, eight sixteenth notes, etc. A quarter note equals two eighth notes, or four sixteenth notes, eight thirty second notes, etc. An eighth note equals two sixteenth notes, or four thirty second notes, etc. etc. I hope that gets the point across. None of this notation of rhythmic value will tell you to space three notes evenly over anything unless you tweak things in order to make it happen. A triplet, the most common one being an eighth note triplet, is playing three notes spaced over the time it takes to play two eighth notes. You could also notate the triplet like this and wind up with the same sound. The ratio three to one is telling you that three notes are being evenly spaced over the time it takes for the one quarter note to be played. I don't think I've ever seen a ratio like this being used in professional transcription. Usually you'd see something more like seven to three. That means you are spacing seven notes over the time it takes to play three notes. Now you might be thinking, but John, I've heard him play plenty of music using triplets. That doesn't sound like any tension is being made. You said polyrhythms create tension. Are you fucking stupid or something? Excellent point. Let's check out an example that uses eighth note triplets over just one beat. Now, to me, throwing in one beat of triplets after playing three beats of straight eighth notes sounds a little jarring. It stands out. Tension was made. Now, let's do something similar with tripleted quarter notes. I feel that playing quarter note triplets is more challenging than eighth note triplets. They feel and sound weird. weird. When playing the tripleted quarter notes or quarter note triplets, you are playing three notes spaced over the time it takes to play two quarter notes. Technically, it's the same thing as playing three evenly spaced notes over two evenly spaced eighth notes. It's a three two polyrhythm. Three notes being played in the same time it takes to play two notes. Now, for the sake of understanding all this, let's take a listen to a piece of music using only eighth note triplets. Doesn't really sound like a polyrhythm, does it? I would argue it's not a polyrhythm because both the guitar and drums are following a cohesive rhythm. The two instruments don't clash. No tension is present. Yeah, so what's your point? My point is that something like this is normally notated differently. You could take the same piece of music and put it in a 3-4 time signature and get this. Sounds the same, right? Right. Uh, how? The cool thing about music is you can notate things differently to create the same outcome. It's all a big math equation. Playing a straight eighth note triplet pattern in a 4-4 time signature at 120 beats per minute will be the same thing if you play the same notes at 180 beats per minute in a 3-4 time signature using straight eighth notes. A 3-4 time signature is telling you that three beats fill up the bar, 
and a quarter note gets the value of one beat. Using this time signature, there is no longer a need to use triplet notation. There is no polyrhythm, and it looks cleaner this way. Let's look at one last example of a polyrhythm before we start getting more in depth with everything. A commonly used polyrhythm is four to three. This means you have four notes being played in the same time span three notes are played. Some choose to use this polyrhythm at the beginning of a bar to create tension and then release that tension by playing something more in line with the given time signature. For example, So far, polyrhythms have been demonstrated in just part of the bar. Can you keep a polyrhythm going for multiple bars? Uh... Of course. That will be covered and demonstrated later on in this series. Now, some people argue that a 4-3 polyrhythm or 3-4 polyrhythm are polymeters. I believe they think in the case of the 4-3 polyrhythm, a 4-4 time signature is being played over a 3-4 time signature. This same person might say that in a 3-4 polyrhythm, you have a 3-4 time signature being played over a 4-4 time signature. This isn't really the case. Polymeters indeed have two different time signatures being played simultaneously, but they have their own unique sound and parameters. The next video will be covering polymeters in depth. I feel it's going to be best to get a good understanding of polymeters before moving on to in-depth discussion and examples of polyrhythms. This is because I feel you'll have a much better chance of fully understanding what polyrhythms are and how you can play them. That's it, video's over, lesson is done. If you like what you saw, I'd appreciate you hitting the thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have yet to do so. If you would like to contribute to helping lessons like this get made more often, please check out the Mile High Shred Patreon page. There is a link to the website in the video description. You can also help spread the name of Mile High Shred by commenting on the video and sharing the video. Anything you do does help and is greatly appreciated. And always, thank you very much for watching.